और डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम अमरेश जवलकर ऑफ मराठा मंडल पॉलिटेक्निक बेलगाम टुडे आई एम पोस्टिंग माय सेकंड वीडियो ऑन बीसीटी क्वेश्चंस ऑन सब्जेक्ट बी ट्रिपल ई दैट इज बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग कंपोनेंट्स ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द क्वेश्चंस सो क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी द स्टेटमेंट विच करेक्टली रिप्रेजेंट्स ओम्स लॉ ओके now we know that ohms law states that a current flowing through a conductor is always proportional to the potential difference across its two ends provided the temperature is constant okay so there we always say that it is v is equal to i r so we we always give that statement as v is equal to i r okay so here if you see the statement of ohms law so ohms law says that the current which is flowing through the circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference across its two ends so v is equal to i r where r is a constant okay so this first formula that is v is equal to i r will be the correct formula here okay then we'll go to the next question question number 22 a 10 ohm resistor is powered by a 5 volt battery the current flowing through the source is how much okay so here v is equal to 5 volt okay and r is equal to 10 ohms okay so i is equal to according to ohms law v upon r so this will be equal to 5 volt upon 10 ohms this is nothing but 0.5 amperes okay so this formula we took from your ohms law only so here it was v is equal to i r and r is equal to v upon i or i is equal to v upon r okay so here the answer should be 0.5 ampere so 0.5 ampere is the answer here then we'll go to the next question question number 23 if v voltage is equal to 50 volt and current i is equal to 5 ampere then how much is r okay if voltage is equal to 50 volt and i is equal to 5 ampere so v is equal to 50 volt and i is equal to 5 ampere then how much is r r is how much so we know that v is equal to i r so r is equal to v upon i so that is equal to 50 upon 5 that is equal to 10 10 ohms okay so r should be equal to 10 ohms so here the answer will be c 10 ohms will be the right answer okay then we'll go to the next question ohmic component have a dash v i curve so here the options are straight line v i curve and parabolic v i curve non linear v i curve and sinusoidal v i curve so ohmic components will always have say this is a graph of of v and i v and i so they will be having a straight line okay so option a will be the right answer over here that is straight line v i curve okay so ohmic component have a straight line v i curve then we'll go to the next question question number 25 the potential difference across a 5 kilo ohm is 12 volt find the current flowing through the resistor okay so here he has given potential difference that is v is equal to 12 volts okay v is equal to 12 volts and r is equal to 5 kilo ohms 5 kilo ohms that is equal to 5 into 10 to the power of 3 ohms okay then he is asked find the current so i is equal to how much so we know that v is equal to i r according to ohms law therefore i will be equal to v upon r that will be equal to 12 upon 5 into 10 to the power of 3 so 12 upon 5 is 5 is a 10.0 then 5 4 at 20 and this 10 will go on top minus 3 that will be equal to 
2.4 milli amperes okay so here the answer will be 2.4 milli amperes so option b will be the right answer over here 2.4 milli amperes okay then we'll go to the next question question number 26 an electrical bulb draws a 5 volt 5 ampere current an electrical bulb draws a 5 ampere current when connected to a 100 volt wall outlet the resistance of the bulb is how much okay so here he has given i is equal to 5 ampere and v is equal to 100 volts so we know v is equal to i r so resistance r is equal to v upon i so v is equal to 100 volt and i is equal to 5 so this is around 20 ohms okay so this is around 20 ohms so answer b will be the right answer over here 20 ohms okay then we'll go to the next question question number 27 in which of the following cases is ohms law not applicable okay now generally we should remember one statement that ohms law is not applicable for insulators and semiconductors okay so in this question the answer will be c insulators so ohms law is not applicable for insulators okay then we'll go to the next question question number 28 ohms law is not applicable to now this is also same type of question so as i've told you earlier the statement is ohms law is not applicable for insulators and semiconductors so in these options you can choose semiconductors d semiconductors okay then we'll go to the next question question number 29 the condition for the validity of ohms law is that okay so options are temperature should remain constant current should be proportional to voltage resistance must be wire wound type or all the above so i uh, got from this four options uh, one option is uh, very true that is temperature should remain constant because if temperature remains constant only the ohms law can be fulfilled that is current flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its two ends so option a is the answer here that for ohms law the valid condition is temperature should remain constant then we'll go to the next question correct form of ohms law is we say that the current which is flowing through the conductor the current which is flowing through the conductor is directly proportional to the voltage okay and then we say v is directly proportional to i and then we say v is equal to i r where r is constant so that means this is also correct and this is also correct so both b and c are correct so here the option will be above b and c okay so correct form of ohm's law are above b and c then we'll go to the next question relation between uh, currents according to kirchhoff's current law okay so kirchhoff's current law says that at a particular node okay the algebraic sum of incoming current is equal to algebraic sum of outgoing current okay so if you see this figure if you see this figure then here the incoming currents are uh, current i2 i2 plus i3 plus i4 these are incoming currents so this should be equal to outgoing currents outgoing currents are i1 plus i5 okay so i2 plus i3 plus i4 is equal to i1 plus i5 okay so that comes under option d option d you can see that i1 plus i5 is equal to i2 plus i3 plus i4 okay so here incoming current algebraic sum is equal to the outgoing current algebraic sum at a particular node so option d will be the right option here i1 plus i5 is equal to i2 plus i3 plus i4 okay then we'll go to the next question the algebraic sum of voltages around any closed path in a network is equal to okay so this is according to your kvl so algebraic sum of voltages whether it is voltage drop or voltage source the algebraic sum will be equal to zero because voltage source will be taken as positive and voltage drop will be taken as negative and uh, if you add them in a closed loop it should be zero so according to kvl the sum of voltages around the closed path in a network is zero okay so here option c is the answer zero then we'll go to the next question question number 33 the basic laws for analyzing an electric circuit are okay 
Now we know the basic laws for analyzing an electric circuit are Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, KCL and KVL. So here the option C will be the right answer, Kirchhoff's laws. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question. A junction where two or more than two network elements meet is called. A junction where two or more network elements meet is called. So this is a network element. So this is one one branch, another branch, another branch, another branch. If you see like this current incoming, okay, and here the current is outgoing. Okay, so this junction will be called as a node. This junction will be called as a node. So here option A will be the right answer, node. It is called as node. So here we'll go to the next question, question number 35. Kirchhoff's current law is applicable to only option A is junction in a network, closed loop in a network, electric circuits or electronic circuits. Okay. So here it is always junction in a network. KCL is applied to a junction in a network, a node. Okay. Then here option A will be the right answer, junction in a network. Then we'll go to the next question. Question number 36, Kirchhoff's current flow states that. Now, if you read this statements, net current flow at the junction is positive. Algebraic sum of the currents meeting at the junction is zero. No current can leave the junction without some current entering it. Total sum of currents meeting at the junction is zero. So here, if you see, it should be algebraic sum of the currents which are entering. It should be equal to algebraic sum of the current which is leaving. So option B will be the right answer. Algebraic sum of the currents meeting at the junction is zero. Okay. So B is the right answer for KCL, Kirchhoff's current flow. Then we'll go to the next question, question number 37. According to Kirchhoff's voltage law, KVL, the algebraic sum of all IR drops, that is voltage drops, and EMFs, that is voltage sources, in any closed loop of a network is always Again, here the answer is zero because you take voltage sources as positive and voltage drops as negative. If you add them, the answer will be zero in a loop according to KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, so here answer should be D zero. Then we'll go to the next question. Nodal analysis is based on what? KCL, KVL, both or law of conservation of energy. So nodal analysis is analysis of a junction. And at a junction, we know that all the algebraic sum of incoming current is equal to algebraic sum of outgoing current. Okay. So it should be Kirchhoff's current law. So here option is A, KCL. Nodal analysis is based on Kirchhoff's current law, that is KCL. Then we'll go to the next question. What is a branch? Okay. So options are, it has two terminals. That is true. Is a part of the circuit which extends from one principal node to another. That is also true. It may contain one element or several elements in series. That is also true. So all the above three A, B, C statements are true uh, in understanding what is a branch. So here the option will be D, all the above. All the above will be the option. So it gives explanation. All the three statements give the explanation for branch. Okay. Then we'll go to the next question, question of 40. The positive terminal is at dash and negative terminal is at a dash. Okay. So here the options are in terms of potential. So we know that a current flows from a positive terminal to negative terminal, where positive terminal will be at higher potential and negative terminal will be at lower potential. Okay, so here, according to this statement, option C will be the right answer. The positive terminal is at higher potential and negative terminal is at lower potential. Okay, so option C will be the right answer over here, clear? So students, I have taken another 20 questions in the second video of BEEE DCET questions. You can go through these questions. If you're having any doubts or anything, if you want to ask me, you can uh, drop in a comment or give me a feedback. Okay. So please study the fundamentals of the subject very clearly so that you can attempt any type of objective type of question. Okay. Uh, thank you students.